Hello. So my name is Christoph, and I'm going to talk about TSBox, um, which is a package that tries to deal with time series uh, in our in our class agnostic way. And so I will show you um, what it is. So here, um, here is the link to the slides. Um, so I will show it um, later again. So um, I'm a consultant. I work with uh, clients, and these clients they work. Um, with time series, and they work with all kinds of time series classes. So welcome to the world of time series. Um, so this is how it looks. So these are like, um, this is like, um, this is like the beginning of time, <coughs> beginning of R. And uh, these are like the time series classes or objects that are around to start time series um, since the beginning um, of R. So like um, from the beginning, we had like um, TS objects, which are basically vectors with some time series attributes, which are like well suited to store regular time series data. Um, so they are still um, quite uh, frequently used um, these days. Uh, and if you had like some irregular um, time series, you're probably the best way to store them at that time would be to store them at a, in a data frame with a timestamp um, for each observation, similar to what is done like in the, in the, in the Cibble um, data structure. So over time, there were like many um, additions to that. Um, a lot of the objects like this T-series that was like uh, an early attempt to handle irregular time series, um, basically also yet an observation and the timestamp um, um, connected it. There was like um, the SU package. Um, so maybe like an important might say so it's like the, the release of like the data table package, which started to make like this data frame data structure much more popular. You had XTS, which is a extension of SU, and there were like other packages, time series TIS. And uh, so like uh, it's the event like of dplyr, uh, the table package like further um, um, added to the popularity of, uh, of data frames and then, of course, like the table package um, Rob talked about, there was like a predecessor table time, which like used a similar philosophy than than table. So we had like this 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 many classes, and like a lot of them are still quite present, and people are working with them, and there are models using this time series classes as an input. And if you work with like with different kind of models that use different models, that's just um, a pain. So what can we do with this problem? And this is like the cartoon from the beginning. So like one obvious like solution would be just like create a new standard that just encompasses all these different kind of time series, but that's not what TSBox is doing. So TSBox tries to acknowledge that there is some like past historical past dependencies of 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 of, of all these different um, kind of classes, and like the best solution to de deal with these multiple standards is just to come up with something like this. So if you cannot unify all these standards, so just like build an adapter, and this is what DSBox tries to do. So this is the first thing that, um, and maybe the core of TSBox, so it tries to convert um, between all of these um, time series classes that I showed you. So the way this works is um, shown here. So here I'm using the pipe um, to make it more concise. Um, I start with a time series object. So this is a, a TS object built in in one of our um, example data sets. So it's the approval rates from 1945 to the 70s of American presidents. It's a quarterly time series and it has some missing values in it. So um, you have these converter functions. They all work the same way. So you have uh, TS underscore and then you have the class to which you want to convert it. So we take the TS object, we want to convert it into XTS object. We just write TS XTS around it, and here we get the XTS. So we can take this object, convert it to the data frame, we can convert it to a Zibl, we can convert it to a time series, TIS object to IRTS, and back um, to a TS object. And if we compare it to our original object, so happily that's the same. So all these functions work on all different time series. So it's, 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 uh, it doesn't matter. Like the order of, 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 of this whole lines of commands doesn't matter. 
Uh, yeah, so this is just to summarize. So that's the timeline again that I showed you. Here is like beginning of time, and then we have all these things um, coming up. So TSBox is just the converter between all these tools. So because this works kind of nicely and it's um, relatively well tested and it works for many um, time series, um, like even if, like for, for high frequency time series, like up to a second to uh, like all the, the low frequency stuff, it, it works relatively well. Um, because it works well, we can build a set of tools that is um, class agnostic, that means so um, we can use these functions and we can apply it to any of these um, 12 classes and they will just do what they do and return an object of the same class as, uh, as they um, got. Um, here are like some basic functions. Uh, th these are some, some, some really basic toolkit functions that like m many people I encounter, they, they really like, miss in in, in basic RWP, for example, like just to calculate percentage change rates. So that was something that was very easy to do in a software called eViews. And some, like many people I met today, they, they, they really like that. So, so um, we have something similar here. So TSPC, which just calculate percentage change rates, um, PCY percentage change rates to the same period of the last year, annualized percentage change rate, and so on. So the thing about this, functions is that they are class agnostic, so whether they are um, wrapped around a TS object, which is what I did before. So I get back uh, a, a TS object here. And uh, if I write it around the XTS, I get back a XTS. If I write it around the data frame, I get back a data frame. Around a Tibble, I get back a Tibble. So that works for all these this things. There are, um, many other functions, so um, we have functions to combine time series, so this is the analogous to just the C function, which um, allows you to, to take um, single or multiple time series and combine them to larger multiple time series. Um, this would be like, like a, a vertical combination, then you have like a horizontal combination where you add them like this. Uh, usually these functions are also frequency agnostic, meaning that um, whatever um, kind of frequency we, we, we add there, it can handle it. Um, here it transforms the frequency to uh, annual frequency. So this is nothing special about this function. So many of the, of the classes that um, are supported, they have functions to deal with this thing as well. But the nice thing is here that you have like one function that just deals with all of, of these classes. Um, the span function is like a bit like the window function that works on um, TS objects, so it allows you to, to limit the span of a time series, but it's much more flexible, so you can just um, um, enter like a year, um, and because this goes through like the uh, anytime um, package by Dirk uh, Edelbüttel, this also is, is, can deal like with a large range of, of, of different kind of of date formats, so you can use this way. You can also add relative um, starting and end points. So this, this means um, let's start um, one period before the end of the time series. So that would be just the end of the series. So that's useful in like in many practical purposes. If you like write a uh, like R markdown document and you want to have just like what is the latest value of um, GDP growth, so you have just less so convenient thing. Um, there was a plot function, and this plot function is really it's meant to do some quick um, exploration of time series. It's also um, R base based, so it's quick. And uh, so you have this TS plot. You can write it around all time series objects. So this is a TS object. Here I have a data frame. Here I have an XTS object. I can just add them together, and this is the output. Um, there's a ggplot version if you want to do some ggplot theming or something like that. You can use it as well. It has just the same syntax as uh, tsplot. Um, also, like a nice thing is like this convenient way of renaming, of renaming series. So you can just name the arguments and that just makes it easy to do a very quick, um, quick plot. 
to send it somewhere. It's not thought like to do um, uh, publication ready um, graphs, but just quick exploration. So there is more, and uh, on the tsbox.help gives the comprehensive overview of uh, all the functions that are in tsbox. So the last thing that tsbox is um, supporting is that it offers an easy way to turn existing functions into tsboxable functions. Tsboxable meaning like functions that are class agnostic and that can deal with all this kind of, of uh, 12 objects that I showed you. So the main function here is ts underscore, and basically you just need to write ts underscore around a function to make it ts box. So here is a little example. Um, we have uh, a function taken from our base um, principal component, and uh, so we use predict around to get the principal components back. Um, we say scaly construe because that's what uh, makes sense in this context. And uh, so we have this, um, this function here, which just works with um, TS objects, and uh, so that's, that's um, a function that's, as we are used to. Now, to make it TS boxable, the only thing we need to do is to write TS underscore around and tell TS underscore like what class, the, what class here the function usually handles. So this gives us like TS underscore per comp, and this is now TS boxable, so we can apply it on any. Uh, kind of TS boxable object. So here I'm applying it on an XTS object, and uh, the return value of this TS per comp is an XTS. So, yeah, to sum up, so what TS box does, it provides reliable converters between our time series classes. Um, this um, are, is done by functions that start with prefix TS underscore, and then the class of the object you want to convert it to. Like second, it provides a toolkit that, that's just this basic functions that you uh, need when you, when you work with time series all the time. This, uh, they also start with TS underscore, but then they just have the function of, of their underlying um, function. And uh, then the third thing is that they make it easy to make existing functions um, class agnostic. So TSbox is on CRAN. You can install it from there. There is a website, tsbox.help. Um, which also has some vignettes and stuff, and the slides are here. So thank you. Thank you, Christoph. Um, are there questions, comments? Then I kick off the discussion um, by, by asking, uh, what are the... Um, restrictions on, on the time index classes because not everything that XTS can represent, TS can represent. So if you want to go through TS, as you showed in the last example, and want to go back to XTS, uh, uh, how do you handle that? Do you always uh, replace the index and restore it afterwards, or how do you do it? No, I'm not. Uh, so like any object does not um, store any additional information. So it's, it's really just what, what the object usually has. So there is like some danger that we lose some um, information. But what it uses, like one interesting concept, I have like a bonus slide here, is that so I'm, I'm using something that is called the uh, heuristic um, time conversion. So if we go from a TS object that is monthly um, to, let's say, uh, XTS, object or like a data frame, it would just add a timestamp with the first date of the month. So like instead, rather than having like 12 e uh, equis spaced um, things, which is basically what the TS object says it is, um, we have now months, which is us usually what you mean if, if you have like a, a time series with, with, with 12 months. Um, so it will always, if it converts to the data frame, like structures or XTS, it will add a timestamp, which is either a date or POSIX CP. Uh, 